everybody, this is Jake. I wanted to take a few minutes today to show you Voki, the talking avatar, um, and hopefully show you some ways that I think that you'll be able to use that in your classroom, or your students hopefully will be able to use that in their classrooms. So we're going to start off by going to this website right here, which is Voki.com. Let me zoom in up here at the top. Voki.com. And it should look like this. Okay, you'll notice at the top there's a Voki Classroom tab and a Voki tab where you may log in right here. Okay, we don't have to log in to Voki to create one, but you can log in and it will be able to keep sort of you know, curate the Vokis that you've created uh, so that you can use those later on and you'll be able to access them. Voki Classroom, that tab, is a way for you to organize classes and to keep all of your students organized and manage all of their Vokis as well. Okay, I'm going to click back on the Voki tab. And we're just going to go ahead and get started. So I'm going to click on Create right here at the top left. And when you do that, a Voki will pop up for you. Okay, we can change this one at any time by clicking on the die right here, and it will randomly choose one for you. It'll generate a character for you. For our purposes, we're going to click up here at the very top, customize your character. We're going to first choose who we would like to use. Okay, and you're going to have lots of options. A lot of these are only going to be available with Voki Classroom when you register for that. We do have uh, Tunes, Anime, Animals. I'm going to go ahead and scroll across. We've got Edgy, Oddballs, Randoms, VIP, Politics, Holiday, Digimon, Dogs, Cats. The 3D ones look great, but again, they're all for um, Voki uh, Classroom, and those are denoted by the mortar board at the top right. We also have World, so I could choose Abraham Lincoln, and there are a few historical characters, famous historical characters, that you could use, but that's going to be kind of limited. Uh, and especially if uh, you're doing history projects, then uh, just a few students will be able to actually use those. So I encourage them to have the students present. But this would be great for having, say, the Abraham Lincoln give his Emancipation Proclamation. So we could go ahead and do that. But And I do want to show you that you can edit a lot more. So since Abraham Lincoln, we don't want to edit him too much. I'm going to try and choose someone else. So we still have Monsters, Smiley's Classic. Tunes. I'll go ahead and choose Classic and this guy. And so here he is. And you notice that the, as, as my mouse moves around, his eyes are going to track the screen also. Um, before I go ahead, well, I'll go ahead and click over here. Uh, you can customize his hair. You can see that you can change the size of the mouth, nose, body, height, or width. And I'll just make his mouth much, much larger. Too large right there. And also small. Hopefully you'll be able to see that. So I'll go back to the middle. Uh, we can customize his mouth and give him a beard. We can also change his clothing. I'll zoom in to make sure that you can't see that. We can change his clothing and bling, which would be jewelry and sunglasses, stuff like that. So I'm not going to worry too terribly much about customizing it. I'm going to go ahead and zoom out for a second. Hopefully this is zooming. And I'm going to zoom back in so while we create him. So I'm going to say done to choosing my character. Now the next thing I want to do is give it a voice because he's going to speak. So we can do that recording by phone. We could do it by typing in the text. We could use the microphone built in. Or we could record these prior as MP3s using a program like Audacity or even just their phones so that they would have their MP MP3 prepared and they could just dump that in by uploading the file. We're going to choose text today. And we just type the text right here. We can copy and paste it. You see that you can use different languages or different accents also. But uh, I warn you, if you choose a different language, if we were to type English text and paste it in, or and choose Arabic, it would be reading that as if it were Arabic. So it's not going to sound correct at all. Um, within a language of English, <coughs> say, we do have several different accents also. We've got US, UK, Scottish, Australian accent. This might as well. I'm going to go ahead and use this one as it doesn't look much like me. But we're going to pretend that this is my, I'm going to use this to put on my website as sort of a, an introduction to myself or an icebreaker for the beginning of the year. So I'm going to say hello, everyone.
My name is Mr. Duncan. Okay. I promise I'm typing these. And I am very excited to have you in class. How about that? Hmm. Okay. Okay, so a few misspellings there. So I'm going to go ahead. Oh, I will tell you that there are effects down here. Hopefully, the students won't always uh, won't spot that immediately. But if we click on effect, then you can change quite a few things. Dimwit slows it down and makes it much deeper. Uh, T Pain is the auto tune voice. So I'm going to say done. And I do have some misspellings. So let's listen and see how he sounds. Hello, everyone. My name is Mark Duncan. I am really excited to HVEU in class. Hmm. So I need to fix that. So I would preview it and have my students do the same thing. So I am very excited, and my name is Mr. Duncan, to have you. These are some mistakes that a student might make, so I don't feel so bad about this. Okay. So I'm going to try it one more time and say done and see how that sounds. Hello, everyone. My name is Mr. Duncan. I am very excited to have you in class. Okay. Uh, still one thing. Yes, everyone, not everyone. Everyone. Okay, so hello everyone. So now I'm done, so I'm going to say I'm done. And I can choose a background. Now since this were me, I should have a picture of my classroom to upload as the background. So I can use any picture as a background and move, I can also move the character around so I can see certain things in the background picture if I wanted to. So if I click on the magnifying glass here, I can zoom him out so that he looks smaller in, and I could also move him around. So I'll go ahead and leave him right there. You could also use these buttons to move left or right as well, or up or down, but you can click on him and drag. So. I don't have my picture of my classroom, so I'm going to choose an animated background. There are quite a few to choose from. And I'll put an American flag waving as my background, so I'll say done. But you see the potential of using any background for student presentations. They can have to go find, uh, you can have them go find a relevant background. Uh, and finally, we can choose a player, which is just the color. So I will say done and I'm going to go ahead and zoom out and I'm going to go zoom back in to show you all we have to do is click publish and since I'm not logged in it doesn't matter what I save it as if you do create an account you'll want to keep them organized and give it an appropriate name so it might prompt you to say please you know, create an account right here it did not for us so um, the automatically it gives you the embed code now I always make sure that I go up here and choose large and it will give me my new embed code or if you are using a program or an app like Edmodo then your students might want to send the link to their Vokey through Edmodo so you could just click down here and ask for a standard Vokey link and it will be just off the screen down here at the bottom so here it is we can just copy this and then we could use goo.gl to make it a short URL or bit.ly or something else. But we can just copy this and then we could paste that into Edmodo. So that's uh, two different ways. You can use them to embed into your own blogs for, for your class. We can use those links or you could just have them send it to you, to your email address. They can send it to five different people. So they could send one that they did introducing themselves to their parents as well. Uh, to show them what they've been doing or and, and email it to you as well so up to five emails at any given time so here's what we were able to do in just a couple of minutes hello everyone my name is Mr. Duncan I am very excited to have you in class okay, it wasn't too terribly much and I definitely don't look that young but um, I think you see the potential and there's just a million ways that you could use this in class uh, students that are not terribly interested in giving presentations or being up in front of the class love being able to submit these again you're limited to 30 seconds of audio if you're recording but you can just create multiple ones and just send multiple links out to to show them in order so um, it's a great tool it's free and I think that it can be very valuable for a lot of our classes so I just wanted to say thanks for watching today and I hope that you got something out of Voki. I hope you use it and tell me about it 
All right, you have a great day. Thanks. Oh,